The gospel is not for those who are intellectually arrogant. The gospel is not for those people. It is not for those who are financially arrogant. It is not for those who are emotionally and mentally arrogant. The gospel is not for those people. It is not for those who love to argue and criticize. The gospel is not for them. We are not asked to preach the gospel to every human being. I mean, that is what the, what the gospel entails. We should preach the gospel to all creatures. But in reality, the gospel can only be accepted. So we are to preach it to anybody, anywhere. But we should not expect everyone who receives the gospel, uh, who hears the gospel, to retain it, to do something with it. Many people won't. Proud and arrogant people who think they know more than God, who think they understand existence better than God, will not be able to receive the gospel. So the gospel we should pray to God to bring us humble people, meek people, to receive the gospel. Those are the people who are going to support the work of Edekai Mary's ministry, are humble people. They are not people who come to challenge what I'm doing or what Jesus is doing in today's world. That, those are not the people for whom the gospel is for. I know of people who think they understand the work of ministry or they understand life more than myself. Sometimes there are aspects of life that I was completely sheltered, I don't know much about. But when it comes to the area that the Holy Spirit has made me an expert, that's an, a no-go area for challenges from anybody. Because it's simply what God does through me, what the Holy Spirit does through me. We are all given specialized areas of ministry. The gospel is not for people who are braggarts. Who brag about their family, brag about their wealth, brag about this, brag about that. And that is why I always say, you see, those who cry out to God to give them a job, and when they have the job, they start to fight their supervisors, fight other people. They stand no chance. They stand no chance. No chance for promotion. Because God is going to use people. To help you and so God demand the humility from us humility is what is gonna make you to inquire more of God and spend time with God so we should pray for an anointing to preach the gospel to teach the gospel to humble people to meek people those are the people that God is actually going to bless that's why sometimes you come to God to ask God for a job, he just look and just say, forget it, because I know this person. Sometimes, I, there are people, sometimes I look at them and say, wow, if this person had a little education, he would have killed off everybody. There are people like that. The little education they know or the little learning they have become very, very destructive. We should pray for God to give us meek people that we can pour the gospel into. Because those are the people who will be able to bear fruits. Who will be able to support work of the gospel. But that is not really where I'm going with it. But that is the first thing that the anointing does. The anointing upon your life is to take you, no matter what your career is, is to take you to the place where you will be able to share the gospel with meek and humble people, even in your family. Don't quarrel with people who do not want to receive the gospel. It's none of your business. It's none of your business to, to, to be crying that they are going to hell. If you've cried all, you can cry before God concerning them. Ask God to send messengers in case they do not want to listen to your voice, in case they do not like your voice. Or they don't like you, let God send them other people so that on the day of judgment they cannot say in hell, they cannot say that nobody came to come and share the gospel with them. And that's why they end up in hell. The next thing that the Spirit anoints is actually what 
I'm going to be talking about tonight. And that is what God going to do in your life. He had sent me. Yeah, there we go. You see, the first one is that the Spirit of God is upon Jesus Christ to preach. Why? Because people being saved from sin, being removed from the curse and uh, restored back to the blessing, being redeemed into action, being made great, famous and rich, is what the gospel prepares people for. The gospel does not just save people from sin. The preaching of the gospel empowers individuals who have accepted Jesus as their personal God, entity living inside them, for greatness, for fame, for riches. These are the kingdom lifestyle. It prepares them and it sustains and maintains them the power to be an overcomer on the earth. Number two. See, the first one was an anointing to preach, an anointing to teach, to make people only, humble people. Number two. He has been sent. The anointing now send you that the presence of the Holy Spirit begins to lead you to do this. This is what Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is leading him to do. See? In the power of the Holy Spirit, in the fullness of dedication that we did in the afternoon, and today we are dealing, and tonight we are now dealing with how Jesus was sent to heal the broken hearted. This is the area of classical Christianity that has been abandoned. So most of what I'll be doing during this phase, this second phase of 2014, will be healing the broken hearted. I want you all to open your heart tonight to a very deep healing from the Lord Jesus Christ, from the Holy Spirit, from ministering angels that has been sent to wherever any of you are watching. An unhealed heart is the greatest reason why there are no miracles. Unhealed hearts. Many of you think that because you've been born again and you've gone to deliver, deliverance, that your heart has been healed. That's not true. That is not true. And I will tell you the reason. Don't ever think that you are a very strong person as a human being. I mean, supernaturally, you could be a very strong person if the Holy Spirit has, if, if Jesus has worked that in you. But I want you to be aware of this fact that human beings are very vulnerable. I was watching... Um, Something uh, with um, of Steve Owens, the late the late crocodile hunter from Australia, and he was he was with some um, orangutans. I think those are those, those are their names. Uh, those, those kind of apes, and um, when they are young, they are just really nice and so on and so forth. Also, some of them when they are when they are older, but they are built. They are stronger than humans four times. They are four times stronger than humans. So even physically speaking, we are not very strong species. It is our brain, our mind, that actually make us strong. What we are able to, to produce to protect ourselves and make life easier for us is what makes us dynamic creatures. But when it comes to real physical power, a lot of other creatures are a thousand times stronger than us. 
So I want you to think about that. You are not a super, a superhuman being, except you are in the supernatural realm at a particular time, like Samson, and so on. Then you can do some, some strange and wonderful supernatural things. But let me share something with you. That is why there are certain mistakes you are not supposed to make. Because you are not that very strong. I have seen men who boasted against their spouse during a divorce. And women who did the same thing. And what happened? Along the way, they realized that life is not as easy as they thought. It's not as easy as they thought. I mean, a common migraine headache will make your day so bad. I know what I'm talking about because I used to have them a lot. Just one little problem in your life can bring your, almost your entire life to a standstill. One disability, one this, one gap. When the Bible speaks of broken hearted, it means this. Now let me ask a question. If someone picked a drinking glass, the glass you use to, to, to get water and drink, and somebody threw it violently on the ground, what happened to it? It smashed. It is broken to sometimes big pieces, but many a times, Big pieces followed by a lot of small pieces. It will be shattered. Now, let me share this with you so that you are aware of why this meeting is being held tonight. Many of you, before you were born, your parents have divorced or separated. If that has happened to you, you have a broken heart. You were already born with a broken heart because the baby in the belly is watching every event and listening. If you were born at a time of war in your nation, then you were born with a broken heart. If you were born sick like myself, you were born with a broken heart. Broken heart means that your heart which in this sense stands for two things. It stands for your spirit. It also stands in a very technical sense for your soul realm, your mind. I come, I use both when I use the word broken hearted here. If you've been into a relationship in which you found the person that you, you poured your all into that person and that person cheated. I'm telling you, you've been carrying a broken heart all your life. If you've seen your parent, one or the other committed adultery or immorality or idol worship, you are going through broken hearted. If you've been abused in any form, sexually, mentally, beat up, like I was a little boy and I was beat up by a group of big kids in the elementary for no reason, simply because I was from a different tribe or a different race. That's all it was. I mean, they were shouting it into my, into my ear. You suffer a broken heart. If you've had various deaths in your family, I mean, death of people that you trusted, you cherished, you loved so strongly. And they left and went back to be with God or they died through accident. Like myself, two of the kids, that two of the siblings behind me died. And I still remember one of them, I mean, we were little, we used to play together. And one day he died. Or like my father died and just left when we were young. If, if you have suffered from death in the family, you are carrying a very big broken hearted. If you've gone through 
a life of separation from a spouse and then a divorce of any type, whether it's big drama or small drama, you're carrying a very big broken heart with you. If you've watched a spouse die or suffer from cancer, from AIDS, from whatever kind of sickness, and you watch them as they die, you are carrying with you a very big broken heart. If you were born into poverty, and you constantly do not have what you need to make your life comfortable, you are carrying a very big broken heart. If you are, if you are um, married, and you needed baby in the in the relationship and there is none, you are carrying a big broken heart. If you've ever failed in your business, if you are terminated from a job, gone through bankruptcy, if you people have said bad things against you that are not true, people have taken you to court to deprive you of your right or things, people have fought you over lands and property. If you have gone through a lot of harassment, embarrassment from the squads of hell and from humans in one way or the other, if all your life has been of pain, a life of pain and suffering, a life of, of instead of increase, you move a little bit forward and you move a hundred times backward and you have to start all over again. You people attack you with witchcraft. People attack you from the water realm, from the from the second heaven, from different things happening. Family disown you. Family cursed you. A father or a mom spoke bad things against you. Place a curse in your life. You are carrying broken uh, heart with you. So you see, it's one thing. You see, deliverance, deliverance is for you to be set free from satanic bondage. That's one thing I want you to know. But being healed of a broken heart is a different issue altogether. And a lot of pastors and shepherds have no knowledge of what I'm telling you. They, they, they just pour it all together as though it's one thing. It's not. If your husband died in an airplane crash, in a in a in a ship in a shipwreck, an accident, a car crash, you're carrying a big broken heart that has never been healed. You lost your job, you got fired, or the job became bankrupt. You stay forever, no job, nothing. Every day is quarrel. You're carrying with you a big broken heart. If the children you brought into this world do not honor you, talk less of respecting you, you're carrying a big broken heart with you. If people you've confided into, you confided things that are secret about your life and they turn around and went and say it to everybody, it will break your heart. See, those are the things that I'm talking about. I could go on giving you examples upon examples upon examples. You were supposed to aim something. And the people wanted you to give your flesh. To give yourself. If you do not sleep with the man, he will not give you promotion. Things like that. If you have been falsely accused of stuff, you are carrying a big broken heart with you. So I want you to begin to think where you fit in. Shattered dreams. Shattered dreams. You've been prepared for this and what happened? It got shattered. Failure, major failures in your life that keep coming back to haunt you in your dream. Major disappointment. Major, major disappointment. Some of them we cost for ourselves.
Some of them others cause for us. Some of them from the world of darkness. Some of them from family members, friends, and so on. When friends went and snitch on you, dog on you, ditch you, things like that. Another lady went to go and get her nails or her hair. And she is there talking about you. Lying about you. Problems from mother-in-laws and father-in-laws, nephews, cousins, it will break your heart. Tonight I want you to begin to look at areas of your life that people have broken very deeply. Not that you have not forgiven them. You see, you have been wondering and you have been saying to yourself, why is it that I have forgiven these people? Why is it that I still remember these things? Why is it that they are still affecting me? Because you see, one failure, one disappointment from friends can keep you stagnant for a long time. One dishonor from a spouse. Your spouse go out there to go and tell his mother or his brothers and sisters things that should have been secret in the family between two of you. Sometimes things are happening in the family between you and your husband. By the time you know it, everybody else has heard it. People were not faithful to you and you were faithful to them. I'm telling you, you have been carrying a big broken heart for many years and you have no idea. Jesus said the second thing he came to do is to heal the brokenhearted. That is my job. My job is first a healer. I am a healer. Number two, I am a seer. And number three, I am a pastor. Tonight, I am calling on Jesus, the healer, to take possession of me. And to take possession of those of you who are with me in ministry. To begin to heal the shattered, violently shattered mind. Violently shattered spirit. That is why many of you cannot worship. Many of you cannot pray. Many of you cannot read the Bible. Not because you don't want to do it. But it's because your heart has been violently tortured and shattered. In different tiny pieces. And you have no idea. That's, that's why. Many of you do not even know why. Sin is happening in your life. Many of you do not even understand it. You don't even want to sin. But sin is happening. It has to do with the fact that. Your heart is not in one piece. It's like different part of you. Is being pulled. By different things. And different people. The reason is because you have been violently shaken and violently shattered. Your soul and your spirit have been violently shattered and scattered in different directions. And when we talk about Jesus healing broken hearts, broken hearts are not something that any other power or force in the universe or in the supernatural can heal. There is none. It's not something that a therapist can heal. They can patch it. They can put plaster on it. They can administer medicine. Why many people become crazy, violent, angry, irritable is because they are, they are heart has been violently shattered, scattered, and broken. And it has never been healed. And all people tell you to do is to go through deliverance. And you've gone through deliverance, but you realize that even after deliverance, you are still doing the same old thing. Even after deliverance, 
Your lifestyle has not changed. No miracles, nothing. It's very hard for you to practice a life of faith. The devil comes in and out of your life. In and out of your life. The same kind of people have been attracted to you for evil. Negative people. Violent people. Bad people. And you ask yourself, why? It's because your heart has not yet been healed. And this kind of healing, only Jesus can do it. Only Jesus can do it. Nobody else is equipped for this kind of ministry. Nobody else. And that is why he said to me, my first job on earth is a healer. I mean, I know there is this big, big, big elephant in the room for me to do, which is to train people in the area of business and investment, politics, leadership, and pastoral ministry. I have that big job, but I will not forget the primary job, the primary offices I hold whereby these things rally around. I know that he has given me a job description which is to, 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 to manifest his presence and demonstrate his power. When that happens, heaven comes down here to be with us. Very, very important. Have you asked yourself why is it that you are constantly have no motivation? In spite of all this teaching that the Kai Mary has been teaching, you have been going to listen to this prayer from Brother Dees, from Sister Dad, from Pastor Dad, from Apostle Dees, from Prophet Dad. You're never satisfied. Nothing is happening. Sometimes a little miracle here, and then a lot of other things that doesn't happen. You wake up this morning, you come into ministry with me, you're full of fire for the Lord. And the next second, it's like something comes upon you. Boom! And when you wake up in the morning, it's like you are so different. There is no motivation. There is no fire. There is no power. You are not motivated to rush into life and accomplish things. You don't really believe that God can do much for you or through you. There's one reason for it. It's not because of the devil only. The greatest reason for all this is because your heart is broken. Most of the Psalms of David you see is actually David crying out for God to heal his heart. Because as a young boy, he was tortured. He was denied his right. Until Jesus heals your mind, the things that the devil has been holding against you will not be destroyed. When once Jesus heals your mind, every other things that were not happening for good in your life will begin to happen. Because your mind and your spirit is intact. So your spirit will not be doing one thing, walking one way, and your soul is doing a different thing, and your body is doing a different thing. See, that is how you know that you have a broken heart. You desire one thing, your mind desire another thing, your emotion desire another thing, your body wants a different thing, people's, other people's voices are speaking into you, different things, you are being pulled into shreds. That's why many of you don't even know how to manage your money. You don't know where to invest your money or who to invest your money into. Because your heart is broken. Somebody broke your heart. A lover broke your heart. A father broke your heart. A mother broke your heart. People broke your heart. The church broke your heart. The religion broke your heart. Look at little fellows going to church to go and find Jesus. Only to be abused by, by priests. Little boys.
only to be to be used and abused. Little girls too. I'm left with a broken heart. And many of you think you've been healed. No, you've not been healed. Because what is happening in your life shows that you've not been healed. Because you're not doing very well. And because you're broken hearted, miracles cannot happen. It cannot. It's like God has died. Because whatever he wants to pour into you, immediately pours out of you. No matter how much the Holy Spirit tried to come into you, you always have to go away. Because there is no place for him. There is no place for him to stay and enjoy with you. This is very heavy. This is very, very heavy. Many of you have cried several nights over your kids. You've cried over someone that scammed you for your money and left you penniless. Many of you have cried for a divorce that left you with nothing. You're broken hearted. The little piece of land or money your parent left you, uncles came and fought over it. The insurance money, they fought over it. The property, they fought over it. They killed some of you. And you are lucky to have escaped with your life. If you come from a war-torn country, if there was war in your country, and you fled and you're a refugee in another country, you're carrying a very big broken heart. And that is why those of you who come from war, war territories, you escape from war, you realize that the war is still on in your life, even where you, you've gone to in Europe or America or Canada, or other nations that you fled to, you realize that the war is still on. When you sleep, you see war. I want you to begin to think very seriously. Some of you have been raped. Some of you have been raped. Very, very seriously raped. Abused mentally. Abused emotionally. Cursed. Rebuked. Tortured. Tonight, Jesus wants to heal your heart. So wherever you are in the world, do not think that the violence in your life. This is why many a time there is an outburst of problems. People begin to go insane. Why? Because they are broken hearted since they were little. And it has never been addressed. Things that saw broke their hearts. Like what I saw when I was growing up. I want you to, to know that your inability to live a holy life, your inability to become successful in life is because of the broken heart that you are carrying with you. Inability to make money Inability to be a good father, a good mom. Inability to be a quiet person when you need to be quiet. The drunkenness. The drug dealing, the drug doing. The sexual immorality. The idol worship. It has led, broken heart has led people to, to wander into witchcraft and voodoo and all kind of stuff to look for help. You are so broken hearted. Some of you, your parents were broken hearted. It was not healed. They pass it on to you guys too. And then what you've experienced in your life triply, a hundred times over. There's nobody to comfort you. 
Nobody who really understands this. But tonight, the Almighty is saying that I should come to you to explain why these things are happening to you. Why you are poor. Why you are struggling. Why you are in pain. Why one job to another job. Problems. Everywhere you go. Why you can't stop talking. You are constantly a talkative person. Because you are broken hearted. In your job you are constantly talking about yourself. And giving away your secret to people who shouldn't know it. Because you can't help it. You don't even know how to keep secret to yourself anymore. You don't even know how to say no to, to men who come to you to have sex with you. You don't know how to say no to people who come to violently scam and take money from you. Somebody, one of the prophets, when I came back uh, yesterday, one of the prophets, I don't know how they got my name, wrote me a very fat letter and included a lot of bunch of bunch of stupid stuff in it. And he's talking to me about this. His name starts with Peter. That's all I can say. He's a prophet here in America. His name starts with Peter. The Holy Spirit said, don't read it. Tear it. That's witchcraft. The man is a witch. And I tore it and put it in the trash. Broken hearted will make you to become vulnerable to, to false prophets. The money you should have used to invest in a man of God like myself. Or on your kids. You go to give it to witches in the name of prophets. Lot of stuff. Because you are broken hearted, you do not know who is true or who is not anymore. Any man will come and tell you how great they are. You believe them and you open the door for them. And let them eat the cookie for free. And then they walk and go to another person, another flower, and suck. All those suckers need to leave your life as quickly as possible after tonight. I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are. And I want you to humble yourself before God. And say, Oh Father, Oh Jesus, search me. I have a broken heart. Tell him where this broken heart, where, how it has happened. Because the Holy Spirit is reminding you wherever you are that you have a broken heart. I want you to begin to shout. I want you to begin to cry out to Jesus to heal you. The Holy Spirit is called a comforter. He is moving right now to heal. I am not hearing people's voices, so I hope I'm not just talking to myself. I hope I'm talking to all of you out there. Yeah. Is, God, yeah. is, is God talking to anyone tonight? Because this is really serious. And if God is speaking to you tonight, I am asking you to lift up your voice. And cry out to God and say, God, God Almighty, heal me. Begin to talk to Jesus to heal your broken heart right now. Whoever broke your heart, bring it to Jesus tonight. Report those people to Jesus and ask Jesus to heal your broken heart.
Jesus, heal my heart. Heal my broken heart, O oh God. Lord, heal my broken heart tonight. Father, you know you've sinned. All those who broke my heart, Lord, heal my heart. Jesus, heal my heart tonight. Cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. If you feel like crying, cry. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. These are deep things. Heal my heart, Jesus. Put my heart together, O oh Lord. Lord, heal my heart tonight. Heal my heart tonight. Heal my broken heart tonight. Put my heart together. Put my mind together. Put my mind together. Put my heart together. Put my spirit together, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Touch me mightily. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Jesus, by your wound and by your blood, heal me tonight. Heal me because without you I cannot heal myself. There is no therapy that can heal my broken heart. Lord, heal my soul, heal my heart, and put my body together tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord, heal me. Amen. my heart tonight. Touch my broken heart tonight. Touch my broken heart tonight. Jesus, touch my broken heart tonight. Heal me very deeply. Heal me very deeply. Put me together very deeply. So that nothing will break my heart again. So that nothing will disturb my heart anymore. So that my heart will no longer be pulled about by anybody or by anything. Heal the broken hearts in my family. Father, hear my prayer tonight. Hear my prayer tonight, O oh God. And heal my mom's heart. Father, heal the heart of my mom. Lord, heal my mom's heart that has been broken by the death of my father. And by the death of two of my siblings. Wars and disappointments and failure. Lord, heal, heal, heal. The broken heart of my mom, oh God. Father, I'm asking you to heal the, the broken heart of the administrator of this ministry. Heal the broken hearts, oh God of Maria. Heal the broken hearts of Beverly. Heal the broken heart of Christine. Heal the broken heart of Doris. Heal the broken hearts of Dorothy and John and the kids. Heal the broken hearts, O oh God, of Andrew. Heal the broken heart of Sabrina, of Angel. Heal the broken hearts of Donna. Heal the broken heart of Tawana. Heal the broken heart of Yaleka. Heal the broken heart of Barbara and her kids and grandkids. Heal the broken hearts of Terry. 
Heal the broken hearts, oh God. Of girl and her children. Heal the broken hearts, oh God. Of all your people gathered together tonight, the two Marias, Rebecca, Devon, heal the broken heart of Major, Camellia, heal the broken hearts, oh God. Of your people in Singapore, Macedonia, heal the broken hearts. Of Stephanie, heal the broken hearts of your people tonight. People of God, let me let me let me turn in into um, the uh, the line went off. If I have not mentioned your name, I want you to mention your name quickly wherever you are. Lord, I want you to heal the broken hearts. Heal the broken hearts of Rose. Heal the broken hearts of Marlin Johnson tonight. Heal the broken hearts of Rebecca. Heal the broken hearts of Viviana. 
in your rock. Heal the broken hearts, O oh God, tonight of Chen Dam. In the name of the Sovereign Son of God, all my covenant partners tonight receive a new heart. Receive a new heart. Receive a new heart. Heal the broken heart of John and Paul. I want everyone, wherever you are, lift up your hand because this is a very holy time. Did Jesus move powerfully to heal? You are the great physician. Move powerfully to heal every one of us of broken heartedness tonight. And let our life never be the same. Don't allow the life of Freddie, William, Lisa, Princess William, Bed Marsh, heal their broken hearts tonight. Heal Lisa so deeply. Heal the broken hearts of little Mel and Zoe. Heal them deeply, Christian in South Africa. The great physician, you are now here. By your wound and by your blood, put us together tonight. And let us begin to enjoy the good life that you've called us to. Heal the broken hearts of Garrett in London. So many people, please, if I have not mentioned your name, please don't be angry with me. It's just that I do not have a list to go through tonight. I mean, there is a lot of you tonight. Heal the broken heart of Tony in Florida. Deborah Upa in Florida. Heal the broken heart of Kaisi and all the people associated with girl, including Rodney, tonight, Sam, Libby, Emma, Ryan. Lord Jesus, because I've asked for this, you are doing it tonight. Heal the broken heart of Beverly so deeply and all of his children. All of her children, please. Of Christine. There are many, there are many of you who are following this ministry. You've lost almost everyone in your family who are dear to you. Father, reach out and heal. Reach out and heal my mom. Reach out and heal my mom. There are many of you who have lost your, 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 your husband to cancer, to things. Some of you have lost them to other women. Or other men. Vice versa. I ask God to heal your mind, to heal your broken heart tonight. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray for the administrator of this ministry that God will heal her heart very deeply and her mom and her children. Pamela too. Doris, I pray that the hearts of your children and you be healed so deeply. 
Maria, Maria, the two Marias. And every one of you from South Sudan. And those of you from Somalia who have seen war. And Doris, yours is triple, your place is finding is, is in war right now. It's not enough that your husband died in plane crash and here war comes again to where you are from. Some of you, you're running away from one war into another war. Jesus, heal, heal, heal the broken hearts of your people. Heart that has been violently shaken, violently shattered. If you do not heal us, we won't be able to perform in life. We won't be able to become great, famous, and rich. Heal us tonight. Your church has been shaken violently, shattered violently by false preachers and pastors and apostles and false prophets and evangelists, opportunist, evil, negative opportunist people. Some of your people have walked into churches and they were destroyed by churches. Lord, heal Angel very deeply. Heal Lisa very deeply. Donna, Sabrina, and many of those of my sisters and my brothers. Heal very deeply, Barbara. Heal tonight, Jesus. Girl has been shaken so deeply. Jethro has been shaken so deeply. Beverly has been shaken so deeply. Lord, heal, heal my sister and her daughter and son in Wisconsin. Heal them deeply. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to thank God for healing you. Thank Jesus. Tell Jesus I thank you for healing me tonight. Thank you for healing me tonight. Lord, we depend on your blood. We depend on your wound. We depend on you. You alone can do this kind of thing for us. Heal the broken heart of Dorothy in Switzerland so deeply. Heal the broken heart of her son so deeply, oh God. Simon, Lord. Heal, heal, heal tonight. You have been sent to heal the brokenhearted. Put us together again. Only you can put us together again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing us. And people of God, let me tell you what's going to happen. You see, with Jesus healing your broken heart, you are going to see how things going to move quickly. Things going to begin to move very quickly. 